YouTube, you read that correctly. We are going to be playing Coma on turn three today with this Kazmina Teamer Transmogrify deck. Now, I was challenged to make this deck, specifically a deck featuring Kazmina, the Enigma Sage, by Slow Unpacking on YouTube slash Twitter. Go check them out if you like slow, chill un opening of uh, packs, things that aren't rushed. You can really appreciate the cards. Go check them out. But he challenged me to build the deck around Kazmina. So initially, I was going to focus on Kazmina plus Teferi, that combo of doing Teferi plus two every turn with Kazmina's ability and taking extra turns. Still might do it, but I already brewed that deck, right? I wanted to do something special for slow unpacking to rise to the occasion and really take the challenge to heart, really did give it its its due diligence. So I brewed something else. And the other thing that Kazmina does well is that she makes tokens. So I thought, okay, well, tokens go well with Transmogrify and what's the best creature that we can play in standard? And I thought Coma. So that is kind of the core of the deck. We're using tokens to Transmogrify into Coma. Now Strixhaven has really given this deck a big boon and that is Emergent Sequence. So this lets us both ramp an extra turn so we get to transmogrify on turn three instead of on turn four and it gives us a token that we can then use transmogrify on so it is really benefiting this deck and i don't know if anyone else has noticed that combo but i haven't heard many people talking about it it seems like a overlooked some might say but that's kind of the goal right we want to get this on t2 and then we want to cast transmogrify on turn three so we get coma and then we can just start winning the game by having a chain of the coils beating our opponents down now, a couple of other things, right? We have our Token Makers, Forbidden Friendship, Asika's Chariot. We have Divide by Zero, which learns and can grab us Fractal Summoning from our tokens. And of course, Kazmina is going to make us tokens, and we have Shark Typhoon for more tokens. There is a bit of interaction in Fire Prophecy and Prismari Command. Fire Prophecy also lets us tuck away a Coma if we draw one instead of, you know, we want them to just be in the deck so we can transmogrify for them. And... Then Prismari Command both damage and it can help us do a uh, faithless looting type effect to dig for either Transmogrify or Luka. So that's the deck. Let's see how it plays. Okay, we go first. We have the combo. This could be a T3 coma. We're on the play even. <laughs> this is going to be spicy right off the bat. Right off the bat. If they don't have removal, then uh, it's going to be a fast game, I have to imagine. They're on mono white aggro. I have to imagine if they're playing a snook over planes. So this just could be uh, backbreaking. So we grab a forest for our emergence sequence. We play a mountain, emergence sequence off. We can have the fable passage get a second red. Okay, the aspirant. That's not going to stop the uh, madness that's coming. So we crack, table passage, we get that second red that I said, and we're going to transmogrify our island. <laughs> Turn three coma, that's, uh, that's something. <laughs> They're massing over it. How are they going to deal with this, they're thinking. And I hope the answer is that they're not going to be able to. We need like a vanishing light or something, probably. Because Sky Club Apparition is gonna cut it. Wow. High rolling on the first attempt. <laughs> I play a Shadow Spear, okay. Fortunately, we can tap it down permanently, or I guess like forever, with using the Coma Serpent tokens. So we shouldn't have to worry about life gain anytime soon, having that uh, matter. Okay, so they, they use the ability instead of equipping. Maybe a mistake. May just be them uh, trolling. Not sure. Uh, okay, they say oops, so it evidently was a mistake. Make another serpent token. Um, 
go to combat, send 9 at them. I don't think they want to trade. Okay, they don't. Here we play out the Ketria Triome as a land. So we can play Luka next turn, I guess, if we want. Although, I mean, we can get a second coma if they somehow remove one of ours. Um, but I think we just end the turn. Get another Serpent. I'm going to tap down their thing. Okay, yeah. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That's how we do it. See how resilient it is, how uh, how we can manage against other decks. But off to a good start, I have to say. Okay, we go first again. We have the T2 emergent uh, sequence that we can do. Opponent starting with a Castle Ardenvale. Curious opener. Does it mean that they are on mono white or on some kind of control list? And they just don't have a white source? Unclear. Unclear. Okay, so we want to run at the Emergence Sequence. We don't have a Transmogrify yet, and I don't really necessarily want to expose my Emergence Sequence land to um, getting removed. So I think for now we just go Forbidden Friendship. Alright, gets hit them for one. I'm not sure what they're on yet either, so getting a bit more information could help. Play an island, they foretell something. Interesting. I think we do just uh, emergent sequence now. Grabbing red. I hit them for two. Next turn we can try to Luka off. They tap down for something, because I imagine this is probably either a counter spell or a board wipe. Could be an always beholding, you never know. Uh, but they actually don't do anything. Tap through target creatures. Sure. And they learn. Okay, interesting. Could have divided by zero, but um, not necessarily feeling that. Okay, so they get the third land, but it's going to be a tapped one. Because they don't have four lands yet. Find Kazmina. Kazmina's interesting. We try to just run at the Luka here. That can't be right. Like, 90% chance this is just. didn't see it coming. Do we care? No. We don't care about the 1 1. And land Kizmina, maybe try to find. I don't know. Another land. The knowledge I teach is a key to many doors. They're probably gonna crack their land. I had to guess. Bottom another divide by zero. There's still time for my Okay, yep, there we go, cracking the fable passage. This deck though could be more tricky if they have Brazen Borrowers and they build to uh, work around Coma or have it bounce back to my hand. Oh, they are getting low on life just from these tokens that have been pounding away. Strixhaven Stadium! My man! Playing the jank. I do love it. I do love it. Um, play the land. I guess we hit for three and then use Luka, getting rid of the 1-1. One, one. Keep Kazmina up. Okay, so we hit for three. Crack. Okay, we remove some point counters. They're uh, losing Mage Tower, as it happens. Okay. And Luka. Oh, Luca has the other abilities too. Of uh, uh, Kazmina. So we're gonna use a minus two to get rid of the token. 
get a nice coma. Um, then we'll plus two scry, I guess. Yeah, Shark Typhoon isn't terrible. If they do get rid of Coma or something, having an air flyer um, can be worthwhile. Right, Coma only gives indestructibility to itself, right? It doesn't give hexproof, so they could still bounce it. But we do still have a Luka up, so we could minus again, change the mountain into another Coma, or we could use Kazmina to make a Fractal. Okay, but they actually, yep, Brazen Borrower, do what I was slightly afraid of. But we still got a token off of it, right? It's fine. They spent two of their mana on their uh, on their turn. To do so. They were looking at Coma or uh, Luca again. Sorry. Realizing that I can probably do it again next turn, and in fact that's what I will be doing, unless otherwise perturbed or thwarted by my opponent. A Doom Scar, sure. Um, take a minus one. Is under control. Now we actually have protection for coma in the um, divide by zero. Because it can bounce spells. That was something I didn't realize at first, too. That can bounce spells and uh, permanents with this. They try to divide by zero. We're gonna divide by zero that. They have a counter spell. They do. They have a gate. Incredible. We still get a 3 3 though. We got teachings of the Inc or archaics. Excuse me. Okay, so that was on their turn. What we can do is. plus two. Luca. Do a bit of scrying. Transmogrify? I think we'll bottom that. Focus on the future. What might another land, to be honest? I think we'll go to combat. Back for three. They lose a point counter. Uh, we'll make a 4-4. Four, four. Threat and lethal next turn. We can also cycle the Shark Typhoon. And then we have the Forbidden Friendship for a follow-up turn. Okay, so they are going to Shatter the Sky. That's okay. We have to draw a card still. We get to 6 mana. Do I want to actually just um, Shark Typhoon? I think we do. Okay. Here we go. And a Chariot. Okay, I've had enough. Able to grind it out. Okay. Urgent sequence. Transmogrify. Looking strong. Opponent starts with a stone binders familiar. Furious. Could be Boros. Uh, actually, they have a pathway, branch lock pathway, so no idea what they're running. Now, do I want to run out the Forbidden or Fable Passage first? Grab a mountain. Um, I don't really think it matters all that much. I'll just run out the island first. Next turn, go Origin Sequence, and then T3 Fable Passage, hopefully into uh, Coma. Okay, that hurts Desire. Oh, interesting. This works with Adventure. Perhaps I should say um, gross, but we're going to go Bark Channel, we are going to go Emergent Sequence, and hope that they are only Selesnia and aren't, um, you know, Naya or something. They don't have Stomp. That's the weakness, I think, to this. If they stop the Ultimatum or the, uh, the Emergent Sequence token, then we're going to be in, uh, in tough shape. Okay, they do have a Mountain. They're eyeing the Mountain. 
My mountain. Ah, oh, they have it. Okay. Well, it's not the end of the world. We do have a shark type that we can cycle to make another token. Okay, they run out giant killer. We have a fire prophecy as well. We just pass the turn here. Cycle and end step. Hopefully they tap down so they don't have um, stomp mana so they can't make the transmogrify a fizzle. They attack. Five, we go to nine. Okay. Yep. And run out. Love strike beasts, sure. The land. Okay, we'll cycle the shark token. I guess we hit for one and then transmogrify. Okay, it's gonna be good enough. We can tap down Koma, their giant killer, and then we have a 3 3 chump. We can chump their love struck. The next turn we can um, like snipe the giant killer with a fire prophecy. Or we could just run up like a Seekus Chariot. Okay, they let it happen. They don't tap down Koma. But I guess that wouldn't really matter. Who do they have? They have a um, Goldspan Dragon. That would be interesting. Because I've probably picked up that this is some kind of a Naya Adventures list, which oftentimes run Goldspan plus you know Unleash Fury as the top end. Okay, so they do tap down Koma. I think we're going to tap down the Love Struck. Attack me for four. Do they have, they have an Unleashed Fury? Nope. Okay. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Run up Bone Pressure Giant. So we have two removal spells, we also have a Seekus Chariot. They don't have any artifacts that I want to care about. Uh, we already have the Coma on board, so we don't really care about um, them having or get, having Luca. Luca doesn't do anything really for us anymore. So I think we do just run around at the island. Smart Command isn't instant, but I think we just want to use... Treasure token. Uh, two damage to Giant Killer. Stop them from tapping down Coma. Treasure, no. Treasure, no. We don't really need it. Send the Giant Killer. The Chariot in the Merging Sequence. Just pitch those two. You want to attack? Um, I don't think so. I want to just hold the line here. You probably also make the argument I should have killed the 1 1 during my turn uh, because they might have something like a protection effect, but we'll try to just snipe it now. Probably just end up putting away the Fable Passage. Yes, so put you away. Get a land, okay. See if they attack. They're thinking about it, which is scary. <laughs> They're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. 
they are really thinking about it. <laughs> okay, they don't don't attack. They land a mammoth. Sentinel, okay. That's scary. It's our last card then. Better not be a showdown of the Skulls. I don't think it would be if they uh, you know, played their land or whatever. They would have waited. So another Transmogrify, we could get a second coma back if we want. Um, so we could attack here, trade uh, a Serpent for something of theirs or six life. I think that's probably fine. And they might think they can get through somehow if we don't reveal that we have a chariot, but okay, they just let it through. They take six. They have the chariot. So we get some more chump blockers. We get another serpent at a turn. Or I guess beginning of their upkeep, really. There's the showdown. Is it uh, too late though? Did you find a Clopis? I have to be careful of that because my life is low. I have to keep in mind too that I can tap down all their creatures right now with sacrificing the serpents. And if I do that, I think I think unless they play Fairy Guide Mother, I think we win. Okay, so they don't do anything pre-combat. Do you want to tap anything of theirs down? Not really. In this way, it's like they are uh, doing the same thing functionally because I'm just trading them away. Okay, I see what they do with their mana. They play Clothis. All right. They've already played a land this turn. They play a 1 1 if they use the Sentinel to tap their Love Strike Beast, but if they do that, they're going to be even more dead. Okay, so my turn. We get a Serpent. We use Coma to tap the Sentinel. Coma to tap the beast. We play another chariot. Because right. Oh no, actually. We have lethal on board. We can just attack with everything in there. Yeah, okay. We'll just do this. 13 damage on the dot. And voila! Defeat Naya Adventures. Alright, we have Kizmina. We have a Fire Prophecy. Actually, two. Bidden Friendship. So we have plenty of tokens. We need to find our Transmogrify or our Luka. A Opponent on Karuga the Macro Sage, which is uh, something you don't see too often. Inside of Ikoria Drafts. There's another Kazmina. I guess I'll run this out as blue source. I'm not really sure it matters all that much. Go to combat, swing for two, see if they respond. They don't. We'll run out Kazmina number one. Start doing some scrying, start searching for our transmogrify. I'm thinking a lot of Kazmina resolved. They have a Drari disruption. 
Or a negate, perhaps? Only time will tell. Okay, they just make a token. Treasure token. See, that's Scry. Koma, I'm gonna have to bottom you, bud. Not ready for you quite yet. Is so they're on four mana now. Right now, it's Alizeth Prismari. Get a treasure token. Okay. I think it's worth just. Um, or I guess we can attack see if they block. If they do, we can uh, fire prophecy. Sure, and then we fire prophecy. We take the bait. We'll put Kazmina back, I guess. Or actually, we don't really need mana at this point. Kazmina would be you know, ending up dead. Uh, although, I guess if we find Luca, we wouldn't be able to do anything with him right now. Or maybe let's put back fire prophecy. Another land. Um, looking at the minus eight, and I don't know that anything in the deck would be worth minus eighting for. Nonetheless, we want a plus two or get a three three. Maybe we do want to just keep scrying. We need to find Transmogrify. Span Dragon, that is a card. So they send it in the Kazmina. Okay. I'll see you after class. I guess we'll scry one again. There we go. I hit for four. So they send the dragon, they could kill Kazmina. They're gonna have a lot of mana though with all these treasures building up. That'd be tough. Might be tough for us. Able Passage, crack it. Okay, they go for the kill on Kazmina. They're almost assured they're going to get it. They do. Now they have 9 mana. X. A lot of mana. Seagate Restoration. That's a card. Play a Fable Passage, go to combat, they have something they can do. Swing or four at them. Now I guess we're just going to Transmogrify on the mountain. I think this has a lot better chance of survival than the 1-1. One, one. one, it's a land, so something might not target it. And then... Um, it had three power, or rather three toughness, so it would be resilient like a stomp or something. Okay, we get the coma though. Let us get the trigger. What else have got? Otherwise, I mean, we have lethal on board. They don't respond to a coma if they attack or something, but that's uh, perhaps putting it overly uh, aggressively. Okay, another gold span dragon. Do you want to tap down something? Or what mana should I have actually just casting? Coma? Um, though I guess we, it's a tough call. If we don't do this, we can just kill them next turn, I guess. They're gonna have seven mana still. Yeah, maybe that was a mistake. <laughs> oh, they have like uh, six cards in their hands, so it's gonna be tough, even with coma, I think. Stuff in the graveyard. 
Draconic Intervention 7. Coma Indestructible. So they kill my 1-1. Uh, That's what they do now. And Transmogrify. Go to combat. Hit for 6. Go to 2. Play Kazmina. I don't know that it's worth getting a 2 2. It's gonna die to another board wipe. I think we just scry. Oh, you know, we're tapping down one of the dragons anyway, so we'll have to choose between attacking me or killing Kazmina. I think an okay trade. Focus on the future. We could even just tap down both of their dragons. I think we'll let you have an attack though, because I want to keep Coma protected. If I had a bounce spell, they would have used it. They have like a All Runs Epiphany, we're just dead. Let's see what they got. <laughs> Okay. They tap. They deal four to me and they make a treasure. I just okay. Yeah, well that's uh gonna happen I guess, right? Smart command, okay, go to two. Now we're uh, probably dead. If only we had a bone crusher giant in here or something. <laughs> Kind of way to deal face damage. So close. Read the drill like a shark typhoon or something. Gotten a uh, surprise liar. Just deal two damage. Might have won. The game isn't over yet, but it's looking it's looking tough. Coma. Looking at their gold spans. I hate to think if they had a two damage spell, they would have just, you know, flung it at me. A cycle. That's a very good start. Ooh. Close. What are they gonna do? Going to the tank. They're thinking time. Pass to attackers. Okay, you're going to tap the gold span. 
sacrificing the tapped creature. Gonna tap the gold span, sacrificing this. Pass to attackers, block with a fractal. Save an Ember Cleave, well. So be it. Okay, they don't seem to have an Ember Cleave. They don't have enough mana for a Magma Opus again. Gonna be opponent. Discard an instant or sorcery card this way. Like a creature or planeswalker. Okay. So that's not gonna kill me. You cycle. Okay, well uh <laughs> Oh my god. Whew. <laughs> Skin of my teeth on that one. Well YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the brew as much as I did. These challenges from uh slow unpacking really have been something forcing me to really be creative and rethink my common approach to deck building. Nevertheless, I'll see you next time.